This is Adam, and he suffers from gout. Try Urol. It helps to prevent crystallization of uric acid crystals in gout therapy. Urol, effective urinary alkalinizer for gout. Hello, I'm Camilia, and this is Kini News. Wanji, who was recently released from Kajang prison, has claimed that Najib receives special treatment in prison. He alleged that, among others, Najib could wear normal clothes. Preacher Wanji Wanhusin has dismissed speculations from certain quarters that former Prime Minister Najib Abdul Razak was not jailed in the Kajang prison. In an exclusive interview with Malaysia Kini, Wanji, who was recently released after serving his sentence there, also claimed that Najib is being accorded very special treatment in prison, unlike ordinary prisoners. Tak pakai baju wan-wan. Kita pakai baju wan-wan. Pakai yang biasa. Macam kita duduk rumah-rumah macam tu lah. Bukan dia pakai kot, tak, tak lah. <laughs> so ni dia pakai macam duduk kat rumah kita. Macam saya dekat dalam tu pakai baju manduan. Oh. Hmm. Tapi dia dalam blok yang sama ke? Tak, 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 tak ada blok yang lain. Ha. Kalau ada orang kata dia tidak berada dalam penjara tu, tak betul. Memang ada di penjara kajak. Memang ada. Ha. Sebenarnya memang ada. Biasa, memang hari-hari lah dia ada kat situ. <laughs> Kecuali kalau dia ada urusan di luar. <laughs> macam contoh kot, uh, mahkamah tu dia keluar. Itu. Cuma blok istimewa Ah, ha, blok istimewa lah Memang dia istimewa sangat Bukan istimewa tapi istimewa sangat <laughs> Elaborating, Wanji said he had no chance to interact with Najib during his time at the Kajang prison He said he saw Najib from afar as his block is right at the back While Najib's block is near the field Wanji said when his lawyer came to see him, he would walk past Najib's block and see him However, he said he never got a chance to talk to Najib when contacted for comment, the prison's department denied that Najib was given special treatment. Its director general, Nordin Mohammed, stressed every inmate is being treated equally and no special treatment is given to anyone, including Najib. Najib was jailed for 12 years and fined 210 million ringgit after the federal court upheld his sentence and conviction in the SRC international case in August 2022. In February, the pardons board cut Najib's 12-year jail sentence to six and reduced the original 210. 10 million ringgit fine to 50 million ringgit. Meanwhile, the prison's department has refuted the claim. The prison's DG said that everyone is treated equally and Najib remains subject to the Rules and Prison Act 1995. All individuals serving a prison sentence are managed in accordance with established rules and standard operating procedures. This is according to the Prison Department Director General Nordin Muhammad. Nordin said this while refuting claims that former Prime Minister Najib Abdul Razak is accorded very special treatment while serving his sentence in the Kajang prison. He was quoted as saying by Sina Haryan that every inmate is treated equally and there is no special treatment given to anyone, including Najib, who is subjected to the rules and the Prison Act 1995. He added that strict actions will be taken if any prison officers are found to be giving special treatments to prisoners. Yesterday, preacher Wanji Wanhusin, who was recently released after serving his sentence at Kajang Prison, had said that Najib is special. Not just special, but very special. In an interview with Malaysia Kini, he claimed that Najib is accorded very special treatment, unlike ordinary prisoners. Among others, Wanji alleged that Najib does not wear the prisoner garb and wears normal clothes like one would at home. He also claimed that Najib was housed in a special block in the prison. Wanji was fully released from prison on March 22nd, about six months after he started his nine-month jail term for sedition. He began serving his jail term on September 25th last year over a 2014 sedition case linked to the Slangor Sultan. Zahid has claimed that minority groups are attempting to oppose anything new introduced by the government. He called for collective efforts from all quarters in the government to curb the act of this minority faction. Deputy Prime Minister Ahmad Zahid Hamidi said attempts by minority groups, particularly those who had previously been part of the government, to undermine policies and initiatives introduced by the Madani government need to be curbed. Zahid said this is to prevent the anti-establishment faction from influencing the majority's thinking. He said if not, it would jeopardize the government's agenda for the well-being of the people and the nation. He cited the Central Database Hub, or PADU, as an example, saying that although 
although the policy is good, attacks by such groups have hindered citizens' registration with the system. Elaborating, he said when the government proposed to implement a targeted subsidy method and introduced Badu, some criticized the plan, claiming that the economy ministry wanted to collect citizens' personal information. According to Zahid, the individuals represent a minority group or not less than 22% of the anti-establishment group who will oppose anything new introduced by the current government. In this regard, Zahid, who is also Rural and Regional Development Minister, called for collective efforts from all quarters in the government to curb the act of this minority faction as failure to do so would make them like Biawak Hidup or a burden to any plans to advance the country. He also said that the anti-establishment group always seeks fault in others whether they are in the government or not. Zahid claimed that when they were in government, their leaders were always wrong and when they were outside, they always blame others. Kyrie has shared his experience on the first time trying to register for Padu and the trouble he faced. He also said that he would be filing a police report over identity theft in the incident. Kyrie Jamaluddin will be filing a police report over identity theft after his identification card number was misused for registration with the Central Database Hub or PADU. This came after he faced some difficulties in trying to register with PADU yesterday. In a post on Instagram following the incident, Kyrie shared an image of the error he received and said that he was shocked to receive a pop-up warning alerting him an account had already been created though he had not registered with Padu before. In another post later, he said the issue has since been resolved and Padu was able to reset his identification card login. Kyrie said some guy registered using his IC number. He added that the guy's identity has been doxxed online, which he is not sure is a good thing. He stressed that two wrongs don't make a right and the right thing to do is to make a police report for identity theft, which he will do. He also said that this invites more suspicion against Padu. Meanwhile, Farhan Akmal, who is the press secretary to Economy Minister Rafizi Ramli took to X to warn the public against using other people's identification card numbers when registering with Padu. He said it was impersonation or identity theft and the person behind Kyrie's fake registration has been identified. He added that it is easy to track and there is no data leak as it didn't pass the EKYC process. A DAP rep has slammed Perkasa's call to boycott Petronas over a solar deal. He claimed that Perkasa's boycott call is a publicity-seeking move made for political mileage. A DAP leader has slammed the call by Perkasa for Malays to boycott Petronas petrol stations. Perkasa had made the call of a boycott for one week to protest the firm's decision to appoint a non-Bumiputra company for a solar deal. According to Astaka Assembly Person Jason Ng, the statement by the Bumiputra Rights NGO's chief, Syed Hassan Syed Ali, not only reeked of racism, but also went against the very basis of the country's market, which practiced fair, healthy competition. He said Perkasa's call for Petronas to give at least 50% of its solar panel installation contract at its 300 outlets nationwide to Malay Bumi Putra companies is based on racist sentiments and not on the ability of a company. He added that the company which was awarded the contract is a listed company with proven expertise in the renewable energy sector. He said their expertise has not only gained them contracts from Petronas but from Tanaga National Berhad as well. He added that Perkasa's extreme and regressive call could cause foreign investors to lose faith in the country. Ng claimed that Perkasa's boycott call is a publicity-seeking move made for political mileage. He also urged the government to take strict action against those who incite racial discord. A lawyer has told the government to form an independent body to vet the amendments to the citizenship bill. The lawyer said MPs should also be given time to look through it and to discuss it with others. Human rights lawyer Eric Paulson has urged the government to set up an independent body to scrutinize the amendments to citizenship laws before they are debated in the parliament in the next sitting. The Lawyers for Liberty co-founder said the committee should include the Attorney General's chambers as the main coordinating body, as well as representatives from the United Nations, other ministries, academicians, activists and relevant stakeholders. 
Paulson added that a sufficient time frame should be set for MPs to review the bill in detail. He said they should conduct through discussions and consultations as well. He believed that not all MPs, be it from the government or the opposition, will support the amendments so it cannot be rushed. He said they should speak to other experts and compare the laws in other countries such as Singapore, Australia or India. Last Monday, Home Minister Saifuddin Nasution Ismail first tabled the proposed amendments to the federal constitution on citizenship laws at the Dewan Rakyat. This comes after the government agreed to drop a controversial constitutional amendment, which would deny automatic citizenship to foundlings. The government also dropped an amendment that would affect stateless orang asli. However, the debate on the proposed amendments was deferred to the next Dewan Rakyat sitting, which will commence in late June, just as it came for a second reading and that is all for me today for more stories you can go to kinetv.com you can also follow us on instagram twitter youtube and facebook for the latest news updates if you'd like to support independent media do consider subscribing to malaysiakini.com i'm camelia thanks for watching